hi everyone welcome to this video production this video production will bless you greatly as you watch and pray along prepare to receive prophetic declarations by apostle joshua selman feel free to like share comment and also subscribe thank you so much for joining us and god bless you welcome to start now channel we are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in god's presence the bible says in psalm 119 verses 130 the entrance of thy word be that light. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. I say to you again, I don't care how long that door has been locked. In the name of Jesus, we break that door open now. We break that door open now. We break that Bacos Katevata. We break that door open now. Hear me, there is a strange grace for visibility that is coming on people. Hear me, do you know what it means to be visible? To be visible means to be acknowledged by the optical eyes. You can be there and yet not be visible. Visibility is the key for being living a rewarded life. Until people know you are there, they cannot place a demand on your gifting and grace. Habarika poskata, ebreketos ketevata, abakeros, ya help them please. I don't know what has covered your glory, but in the name of Jesus, may that grace for visibility rest on you now. Let it rest on you now. Hear me. Please help them. When baby Jesus was born, no physical man announced and said a baby is born. There was a grace on him that made the magi. They left their distance and carried gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they came to pay homage to a baby. Those guys were wise men. Why will they pay homage to a baby? So don't tell me I'm small. They paid homage to a baby. I say it again. Whatever has covered your glory, so that those who honor you cannot find you. I lift you by prophecy. Rise to a position of visibility. Rise to a position of visibility. Now hear me. I have taught you here that all blessings come from God through men to men. All blessings come from God through men to men. All troubles come from Satan through men to men. In any case, men are always the midwives of destiny, whether it is from God or from Satan. Hallelujah. There are many of you, God said yes since January, but the man who will say yes on earth has not been available. And there are forces that have pushed them away. Let me prophesy for your destiny helpers. Because you see, let me tell you, you are as powerful as those who support what you represent. The Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor, not in the multitude of your gift. Every man ordained by God to respond to you favorably this year. And for whatever reason, maybe by demonic intrusion, their attention has been taken away from you. I speak to the north, the south, and the east, and the west. I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. I command your helpers to gravitate towards you. Gravitate towards you. Hallelujah. One of the mysterious spiritual currencies that buys a life of dignity and honor, including wealth, is this grace called favor. Favor is a grace. Look up, please. The understanding that favor is unmerited is not accurate. Favor is very merited. Favor is multidimensional. The dimension of favor that is not merited is the grace that administers salvation. But favor is merited. Proverbs 13, 15. 
he says good understanding procured favor please give it to us good understanding give that favor but the way of the transgressor the violator of patterns is hard how do you know favor is on your life the real proof of favor is access to the heart of men you know you are favored to the degree to which there are men to answer and attend to the matters of your life favor carries a tripartite expression please listen favor genuine bible favor carries a tripartite expression number one unusual kindness number two unusual acceptance number three unusual access until this tripartite expression is captured in your life it is not favor and i've told you if it happens only once it's not favor it's breakthrough but not favor favor must happen repeatedly regardless of circumstances exodus 3 21 and i will give these people favor pay attention please in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go help me please ye shall not go empty psalm 44 and verse 3 for those who have been trusting god for structural establishment here is the secret they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their own arm save them but your right hand and thine arm it says and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor towards them Esther 2 15 the b part the little village girl Adassa, who was brought from shushan the bible says and esther obtained favor in the eyes of how many all when favor comes on you the only person who cannot bless you is a blind man provided they have eyes to see all them that looked upon her verse 17 not even the king was spared and the king loved esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins I know what favor is believe me with all humility i can tell you i may not know everything about it but there is something i know about the favor as we have received by grace in the name of jesus upon someone right now someone who is tired from the depth of my heart i pray for you as we have received freely may this grace called favor rest upon you now May this grace called favor rest upon you now. May this grace called favor rest upon you now. I speak to you. Obtain unusual kindness from men. Unusual acceptance with men. Unusual access to the hearts and the resources of men. favor of God is the number one reason people succeed. I have taught you again and again that in this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. There are people who you cannot cast away. The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. There are some enemies you can't cast away. You have to pray for a rite of passage into their heart. Otherwise, that door will not be open. They are called gatekeepers. The covenant that binds them is beyond their attitude. Even in their fallen state, the throne of God still acknowledges them. You won't pray them away. You will pray for favor. For instance, there was no way to, bound, to bind and cast Pharaoh. If David was waiting, if, if Joseph was waiting to bind and cast Pharaoh to be prime minister, he would have waited forever. When God wants to lift Joseph, he will make Pharaoh have a dream that only Joseph can interpret. And give him access to the palace. The wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. There was a young man who has been locked up. My carelessness has added two years extra to his life. And they said, Go and bring him. And the Bible says, The king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Not God. There are men who can send for you and bring you out of certain realms. It was the king that sent for Joseph, never to return to the prison again. 
whoever needs to send for you in the name of Jesus may the voice of favor call them may the voice of favor call them may the voice of favor call them whoever must send for your family in this period whoever must send for your ministry whoever must send for your value may favor compel them to call you can be done within a short time in the name of Jesus I call upon the God who called me the one by whom we have obtained apostles in the name of Jesus Christ by this apostolic and prophetic mantle I speak to someone may that grace for speed come upon you now may that grace for speed come upon you now receive that grace right now Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Hallelujah. Let me declare over you. If there is anybody here that the spirit of death is already tracking, that 20, help them please, that 2022 will be your last year. And then something mysterious will happen. In the name of Jesus, I pray, you shall not die. I say it to you prophetically, you shall not die. Not by the arrows that fly by day, not the noisome pestilences, not the destruction that wastes in noonday. I speak to you that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side, but none shall come nigh you. With your eyes will you see and behold even the reward of the wicked. In the name of Jesus Christ. Job said the Lord will deliver you from six things. Yes, seven. One of it is the scorching tongues of men. Whoever has spoken against you and programmed a climate of death, I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. I cancel that negative statement. In the 
in the name of Jesus. The final prayer I'll pray for you. Please be patient. And then, since he's here, the prophet of God, Pastor Mustafa, will just pray with him to just come, even if it's just in a minute, to make a prophetic declaration over you. And I've seen God honor the words upon his mouth. And I know what God can do when our hearts are open to receive. Hallelujah. And then we'll wrap up with an end of your sacrifice. And that will be it. I want to pray concerning your finances in this moment. I don't believe in poverty. It's already clear there is no more in time in playing around it. There's, there's nothing, nothing to explain about it at all. I'm not talking of fanaticism and this obsession for money. You are kingdom people driven by purpose and intelligence. So when we talk about things like this, please, this is not an attempt to swell lust in the heart of one who is not serious with God. We are, we are talking about the king. That's why I started by telling you that our ultimate motivation is to see Jesus revealed. I have taught you here that money has three major assignments. Number one, for your comfort. God blesses us so that we can live a comfortable life. Number two, God blesses us so that we can provide financial resources for kingdom advance. Number three, God blesses us so that he can give us an opportunity to be a blessing to a dying world in a definite and a practical way. Money becomes a tool and evidence to that blessing to help us. And financially speaking, money has two assignments. Number one, efficiency. Number two, time redemption. That's it. The assignment of money in the life of any believer is to help you be efficient. Efficiency is a product of gaining time. It's a dominion system. Number two, time redemption. It affords you the opportunity to do much within time and then to be efficient while you do so. So one of the ways to waste your time is to keep you limited financially. This finance thing has limited a lot of people, especially because of the realities that have happened across the economy of nations. I have taught you here that there are many dimensions of wealth and I am not one of those preachers that, that will play the place of value, intelligence, contribution. I have taught you extensively. There is an economic system in the kingdom. There is a science to wealth. Wealth is not arbitrary. This is it's a response to value. There are intelligent people here, business people, captains of industry, and I'm not here as a man of God to downplay your pedigree, but I can tell you there is a prophetic dimension to wealth. Why is there an economic problem? And the prophet said, by this time. The prophetic dimension to wealth is called sovereign wealth. This is not wealth by value. This is wealth by the finger of God. It, it happens to men, but as instructed by God. When, that, when the prophetic word comes, let me tell you what happens. The spirit of wisdom follows that prophetic word and starts looking for human actors that must make that word not look like a lie. So there were four lepers who sat down and they did not even know what started moving them. They said, why do we sit down here? That courage was not normal. It was the product of the spirit of wisdom responding to the prophecy of Elijah. Elijah is an area. One person sent by God can schedule a season in your life that brings you to permanent rest. Are you ready to receive? And by a prophet, he says, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet, no matter how blessed you are, I have taught you here that the standard of being financially blessed is that you can give so much to the kingdom without it affecting your overall financial health. If you have not gotten to that state, it means you must open your heart for more. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the privilege of grace and apostleship, and by the power of the prophetic, I speak over someone. May that grace that makes rich, may that grace that can empower a man rolling away financial shame from lives and families, receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Upon the works of your hands, receive it. Upon your mind, receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ. And when 
Saul met with prophet Samuel. Samuel told him, number one, the donkey you have been looking for has been found. Prophecy brings restoration. Number two, as you return, you will find three men holding two loaves of bread. They will salute you and give you. That is honor and favor. Number three, you will come to the garrison of the Philistines and that the hand of the Lord will come upon you and you will begin to prophesy. Truly, the prophetic can bring prosperity. It can be, not, it can be abused, but within the boundary of scripture and the boundary of doctrine, for the believer, it can work wonders. I say it again, the man to surprise you by God, I send them to you prophetically. <laughs> The man raised by God to be his system of help towards your life and finances to bail you out from shame and reproach. Receive of their ministry right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pray in the spirit. You can hold hands with someone if you want to draw that support. But make sure you are praying. Discipline yourself to pray. Lord, we bless you. 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 Majesty, we bless you. All the overflows, make sure you are praying. Those connecting by way of the internet, join us as we pray. And define our spirit man. Skate brende ke paruski e balakosa brest. Embratos ke labrati ke priada balas. Sobre ke de baruntas ke brende greti sabalakos. Embratos ke libre di kria paruski e balanda. Shade balakos ke da brende ke balakos. Sabrati ke barado sabrati ke balaka parada ke vest. Granta Barakoska Pradega Balaka Parusiata Sade Baleda Bakata Franda Balaka Proska Bolosh Embrata Keparaka Tavrata Kebalaka Tavranda Balekos Skade Berende Baruska Preska Balaka Shabranda Balekos Yata Go ahead and pray, edify your spirit man Skade Balaka Tebraska Labarandos Kabrenega Balekatos Rekete bakata fradeke beleke te branda paskata fradeke te belekush. Majesty, sadi baska laka sabrande ke belaska brige beleke dash. E bareke te faraska zaza balaka ta branda. Ke laka ta fradze ke le baraka to sabrige bes. Krate ka balasa da branda ke le parusia ta. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Edified himself, edified himself, edified himself. Shade salaka barandas kabarako shabre de kebelekos. Ali baranta fras kebeleka parusa siya da balanda. Ikre de kebaroka sobre de beleka parusiya tapas. Are you praying? Baranda Frasca Baraco Shabreca Paradusca Lebrenda Beleca Shebre de Baratos Cobrande Baracos and Brenda Belecos Yata Sabaraso Brenda Gabelaco Fias. A few more minutes. Go ahead and pray. Fix your eyes on Jesus. See him lifting you while you pray. See him rewriting your story while you pray. See him giving you ascendance in the spirit while you pray.
A few more minutes you are praying. You are sowing in the spirit, investing in your spirit man. The Bible says, He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting. Can you stretch for two more minutes? Alamarato sabrende gebele kafarasko da brende gebaraku shalas rante gabarate braski malato sabrende gebele kupara. Ay 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 ay! Glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Prophesy, hi, hi, glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, say Hallelujah, 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 Turn that song to a prayer. Say, chant in the spirit, you are glorifying his name. The Bible says, glorify the Lord with your body, which is the Lord's. We give you praise. Halal Yeshua, we bless you. We extol your name because you are King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Tonight is a prayer meeting and it is also an impartation service. You are going to cry to the Lord from the depth of your heart. That which must rest upon my destiny, for my advancement, for my ascendance, I receive by faith. I prepare my spirit. Go ahead and pray that you will not miss out on what is coming from heaven to change lives, to transform you, to take you to another dimension in the spirit. Now, everyone here connected to anything that has to do with ancestry, anything that has to do with bloodline, everything that seems to have a legal hold over your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, at the count of three, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, it will consume that devil now. One, two, help them. Three, be free now. This apakatos katebakata. 
Please help them. Be free now. Be free now. Help us under the anointing. Any family here with the yoke of death on their head, everyone here with the yoke of untimely death, I decree and I declare right now by this Kapakos Koto Bekata, by this oil of preservation, that I command you pass over their family, pass over their destinies, pass over their families. Hear me, every demonic mark over your life, attracting men, attracting tragedies, attracting losses to your life, your business, your ministry, your career, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, by the blood of the Lamb, may that mark be erased forever. Erased forever. Erased forever. Erased forever. Hear me? Everyone here who comes close to prophecy but never handles it, you see it in your dreams, you are just one step to receiving it, and there's something in the name of Jesus. Every spirit assigned to frustrate you, I stand on this altar by the blood of the Lamb. I decree, help them, please. I command an end to that oppression now. And end to that oppression now. Help those under the anointing, please. There are people here, anything you start does not last. There is no problem in starting. You have done too many things this year alone. But none of them has been sustained. Whether it's business, whether it's ministry, whether it's a relationship, whether it's marriage, nothing you do lasts. I decree and declare, by this oil of preservation on your life, whatever God short prophecy from your destiny, let it be cancelled now. Cancelled now. Cancelled now. Cancelled now. Every spirit that makes tomorrow worse than yesterday. That means all your achievements and everything that makes you happy is always in yesterday. You see people sit down and they never discuss what God is doing. It is always something that happened. Something that happened. As though tomorrow does not have anything good. I decree and declare. Whatever makes your, moral, your tomorrow to keep diminishing in quality and value. I decree and I prophesy over you. Let that spirit live your destiny now. Hear me. Anyone here who is in ministry particularly, and it looks like the more the ministry is extending in age, the more everything is going down whether in membership, whether in impact, whether in visibility. You may be following online. I'm standing here under the corporate anointing with all the servants of God here. And we decree and declare, whatever makes ministry a frustrating adventure for you, that it looks like you are called, but nothing in your life shows that you are called. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, we cast that spirit now. The same applies to business. The same applies to career. Your tomorrow, I repeat, should never, never be worse than yesterday. Now hear me. If there is anyone here who is struggling with any terminal disease, particularly something that is already eating you up, that is already plunging you towards death, or anyone here having dreams 
and all you keep seeing are dead people dead relatives people who have died interacting with you or whatever it is the, the living and the dead have nothing in common therefore this night by this oil of preservation be separated forever be separated forever and any human agent in partnership with demonic spirits to invoke death or pain or losses or tragedy over your life and your endeavors in the name of jesus christ we decree and declare this oil upon you becomes an oil of judgment against them hallelujah if there is anyone here that you have been marked in the realm of the spirit for kidnapping by any terrorist group whether in this nation or around the world i stand in the name of jesus as one sent of god i decree and declare that anybody who stands by the road to kidnap you i command the earth to fight them in the name of jesus whether in the day whether in the night every devil walking through men that will stand by the road to kidnap or oppress you may the earth fight them in the name of jesus and every manifestation of accidents whether by road whether by sea whether by air hear me if you enter that plane or that car then it will not crash please believe these are not empty words these are not empty words at all let me pray for your children whether you are there with them or not wherever your children are may this prophetic word go ahead of them and preserve them hallelujah i think he was in the i i, I don't i don't i don't watch the news so much but I, I saw something on the news or so about a young boy was it one young boy i think he's in nigeria here that was killed or i think I hope I'm right with that story. I don't, I really didn't follow the story, but I said, what sort of a thing is this? I'm saying it again, wherever your children are, if there is anyone who could not get to you and now wants to come through your children, whether biological, whether adopted or spiritual, in the name of Jesus Christ, quarter to shame and disgrace, may my God arise and speak for you. hallelujah and everybody who has been commanded to come into your life as an answered prayer and the devil is delaying them and yet you are suffering from that delay you are suffering whether business whether relationship whether family whether prophetic connection anybody that should show up in your life and destiny to accelerate prophecy wherever they are I command divine acceleration to you. The wine presser was supposed to talk to the king fast about Joseph, but because of his carelessness, Joseph spent two extra years. It was the delay of the bridegroom that punished five other virgins. They were all virgins. But simply because the, the bridegroom chose to delay, that was why their oil finished. Whatever will cut short your joy and your laughter, in the name of Jesus, especially during this season, I prophesy to you by the power of the Holy Spirit, whatever will not make you laugh and rejoice, let it go for your sake. Hallelujah. This is not our last service, but I just feel scared to rebuke the spirit of fear and then we're done. Many people are afraid right now because of the festive season, 
there is no money how will my children eat how will i travel can i speak to you dear family of faith have no fear i want to speak to you there is a prophetic dimension of the supplies of the kingdom if you have never had a christmas celebration or a new year celebration with joy and gladness in the name of jesus may this be one with a difference in your life may god raise men you do not know may god raise systems and structures in the name of jesus christ hallelujah here and there people can have illnesses malaria whatever it is and just take drugs and deal with it but there are people here from beginning of this year till now you have not been free from drugs because as soon as one is finishing another one is starting your leg your head your kidney this one is no longer a medical issue in the name of jesus i agree with you if there is anything in your body now that was sent to kill you that is not just a biological occurrence you think it may just be sickness but it's an arrow sent from hell to ensure that you die in the name of jesus that arrow goes back to the devil there are families that it is not sickness that plagues them but this spirit of poverty even if you make so, that someone in that family a director in an NPC, they will still be poor. Are we together? There are many people who will bring certificates for you. Three doctors, PhD in the family, and none of them has a good job. What kind of thing is that? There are people who have been in this city. The land itself has rejected them. Everything fights you. Everything fights you. Is someone learning? Maybe there's someone watching, there's someone following, and you're saying, Apostle, you are just describing my situation. As a family, we, we don't know what the problem is. We don't know what the problem is. You take in, and after two, three months, here comes this strange and wicked spirit. And somebody comes to molest you and by the next day or a few days after you lose the pregnancy that one will need more than medical attention that one will need a miracle service like this in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I know someone who vowed to help a man and I'm telling you I, I kid you not by the next day the person went to the office and the person said I cannot remember seeing you Abba! You can't remember seeing me? When you said I should come with my CV tomorrow, for instance, and give me a job, what happened? Hmm. Hallelujah. What of people who actually get things, but they don't have longevity in their life? I don't mean physical longevity. Nothing stays long. The moment they have money, just start praying for them. Because it's a matter, in one month it goes down. Once you give them a position, just know that in, in two or three weeks in that office, something must happen and they must lose it. It's like if you don't lose good things, the realm of the spirit is at a, a state of unrest. If there is anything that is on anybody's head here, that followed you for this meeting, I decree and declare, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I lift it up from you now. I lift it up from you now. I lift it up from you now. Hallelujah. I know someone who traveled abroad responsibly. Just when they were checking people at the immigration, I think I've shared the story. They were looking for somebody who was a thief. And they saw him and I think there was a up to 50% resemblance with the thief. And they moved him to one home. Just like that, I don't look like a rich man. I don't look like somebody who is impacting the world. 
my face now looks like a thief. Ah oh, no. Every wrong, every fail in the name of Jesus that is programming evil over you, that makes evil to look like good and good to look like evil. I declare that veil is torn from your face. Torn from your face. Torn from your face. Torn from your face. Hallelujah. Please hear me. True story. Someone was begging for money from somebody to take care of an emergency in the hospital. This is a true story. And when the person was doing the transfer, something came on the person and he missed the account by one digit and he sent the money to someone else. This is a true story. See, the, thing I've, the things I've seen in this life bar by reason of ministry. How do you plan to bless someone? Then it's when it's now your turn, they miss it by a digit. What was that other person praying that his own account was the one that came? Listen, do you know that God is called, you read your Bible, the sons of Jacob. I hope you know Jacob had 12 sons. Is that true? The first of them was Reuben. Read your Bible, you are Bible students. Jesus is never called the lion of the tribe of Reuben. What happened to the firstborn? Not even Simeon. How did Judah come out to become the lion of the tribe of Judah? When Jacob was blessing his sons, you read your Bible now, he looked at Reuben and he said, you are my strength. You are the, the excellence of my strength. But you are as unstable as a wind. He said, thou shalt not excel. And even Jesus, when he came, he refused to identify with that man. He would have polluted his own ministry. Not lion of the tribe of Reuben. Not lion of the tribe of Simeon. Lion of the tribe of Judah. So don't say we are the most enlightened family in our area. The realm of the spirit rearranges based on the covenants you are standing on. Did you hear what I said? It is, you can claim whatever you want to claim. The realm of the spirit with digital precision will rearrange everything based on the, the code that it was programmed with. That means it is possible to be a man physically, but the realm of the spirit brings you to a position of a woman and you will find out that you cannot feed your wife. Because the realm of the spirit does not yet authorize and recognize you as the Abba, the bread provider. You can be a graduate in a family and the one who takes care of them is the one that did not even go to primary school. Because in the realm of the spirit, that person is standing on a covenant that the realm of the spirit recognizes that one as a breadwinner. I'm saying that because we're about to pray. This miracle service, don't worry, we'll finish on time. Don't say I'm still teaching. This is the deliverance you are receiving. No, tonight you have to be angry. Enough is enough. Enough is enough in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? Do you know how many gifted people are in this nation and in Africa? world ministers music ministers these are people that are supposed to be at a global level but this foundation has kept them you talk with them you are like what are you still doing here there are people who will listen to you and say you are the exact person our company is looking for and after three years they will pass you every day and never call you for a job they would bring an ignorant person and train the person, send the person to France, return the person back and give the person a job. Whereas you already have the qualification. How about ministers of the gospel? Just because you are sincere, let me tell you the truth. Liking you is a grace. Make no mistakes about that. Liking you and receiving of your ministry generationally speaking is a grace 
you can be sincere and do all you want to do it will still not work is someone learning now wicked spirits programmed in foundations it's like they tie you with a rope just when you are moving you are about to obtain this the way it pull your father it pulls you back you are on your way going whether you are a preacher it pulls you back just when you are reaching your destiny helper it pulls you back in the name of jesus whatever has tied you i cut it away from you right now i cut it away from you right now i'm saying it again i cut it away from you see listen can i tell you believe me when i tell you you can know that you have had victory over your foundation the result will speak instantly a job that was difficult suddenly comes listen job chapter 42 give us verse 10 and 11 let me show you something you can know when a demonic resistance holding you has left the realm of the spirit and the physical realm will bear witness because the earth listen to me the earth even water is a witness and the lord turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends so the lord gave job twice as much as he had but 11 is where i'm really going to what suddenly happened to him you can know captivity has turned around watch this then there came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters and all they that had been of his acquaintance be question what drove them you think they just left you think they did every one of them started feeling like I. what is why is job's issue coming to my heart that's because something was corrected in the realm of the spirit watch this the bible says they did eat bread with him in his house they bemoaned him and comforted him over the evil that the lord had brought unto him and then this is how god restored him every man also gave him a piece of money so they had it before while he was suffering the same way your uncle has it and is aware that you are in this city you have sent a text sent a text stop sending a text come for miracle service carry an anointing upon your head i hope you believe what i'm teaching you everyone gave him a piece of money what kind of business was he going to start in that state of pain how long would it take him so the lord restored in the realm of the spirit but physically things started happening can i tell you the truth you can know doctors when a patient has malaria how do you know the patient has malaria or typhoid there are signs is that true he goes to the hospital and there's what they call vital signs. Am I right, medical people? You now begin to check. Uh -uh. Temperature is running. The person is um, maybe vomiting, stooling or doing whatever. How do you know the patient is recovering? You know the patient is recovering because things begin to change. Are there times when you take drugs and find out that the drug did not affect the intended change? You still go back to the doctor and say, this drug did not work. They will now do a further test and say, ah, we thought it was this. So just because it was a drug did not mean it solved every problem. As far as your body is concerned, you didn't take a drug. Even though you were on one week medication, your body did not recognize it because it was not the solution. Don't say I've been praying. Don't say they prayed for me. When you take malaria drug, for for what now typhoid it may not work but it is still drug tonight the right drug is coming on your head yes, sir. in the name of jesus christ as i'm declaring over you you may not know what is changing for some of you as i'm declaring it's not only your health by tomorrow, if phone calls, you will wake up with phone calls as a what is happening to me, what is changing in my life. 
Listen, please hear me, believers. Let me tell you the truth. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I've been mandated to insist that your life produces results. Hallelujah. Undeniable, unquestionable results. Some of you, by reason of what is on your life, you are supposed to be building houses for people, not even looking for rent. Honestly, because in terms of value, you have worked on yourself. Let me pray for someone again. What is sitting on your destiny that will not let you and your family rise by the power that is in the name of Jesus? Here at Koinonia, oh, be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. Be lifted from your life. That demonic embargo. Psalm 3. Psalm 3. Please help us, media. Psalm 3 and verse 1. Lord, how they are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Verse 2. Many there be which say of my soul, There is no help for you in God. Verse 3. But thou, O Lord, shalt a shield for me, my slowing and the lifter up of my head. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that nothing keeps my head down in this season. I am lifted supernaturally. My glory, the Lord fell off of my head. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Acts chapter 12, please read it to us quickly, Acts chapter 12, from verse 4, the Bible says that Peter was kept in prison. And the Bible says they kept him in prison, intending that after Easter, they would bring him out so that the people would kill him. Verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. What happened? And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door that kept the prison, verse 7. The Bible says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison, and they smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and the chains fell off from his hand. Verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind up thy sandals, and so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment before thee, and follow me. Verse 9. The Bible says, And he went out and followed him, and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel, but he saw as though he was in a vision. Ten. Hmm. And when they were past the second, the first gate, there were three gates. The first gate brought him out of the prison. The second gate was midway. And the Bible says they came unto the iron gate that leaded to the city. Listen to me. This is the gate that stops visibility. There is a gate that stops the visibility of men. It says the gate leads to the city. 
Your business can be there, but there is an iron gate. Listen, and the Bible says that the gate opened on its own accord. When that gate opens, the next thing you see is the city. It's the gate that controls influence. Are you ready to pray? In the name of Jesus, every gate standing my way of influence and visibility, I declare be broken right now. Lift your voice and pray. We have broken the gates of God and put the bars of iron in thunder. Of the Lord, listen to me. We are going to pray against delay. It was the delay of the bridegroom that made the oil of others to finish. If the bridegroom came early, all ten of them will see him. They all had oil, but because the bridegroom delayed, the oil of others finished and they missed out. We are going to pray. Lord, bring speed to my destiny. Bring speed to my life. Lift your voice and pray. Bring speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my business. Speed to my career. Someone is praying. What's up? What's up? Jesus. We are still praying over speed. Look at me. Listen. The unit of destiny is time. God can bring you help speedily. Are we together now? Yes. We are going to pray. The Bible says, and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And Elijah ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Jezreel. We are going to pray. Lord, bring speed to my life. Bring speed to my life. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Speed, speed, speed. Someone prophesy. Someone prepare. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 125, verse 3. Psalm 125, verse 3, please. The Bible says, The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Why? Lest the righteous put their hands in iniquity. The rod of the wicked. You are going to command every finger of darkness and evil over your life, your family, your children. You are going to command it to give way. Are you ready? Lift your voice and pray. The rod of the wicked. 
shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous. Hallelujah. 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 Job chapter 5, please. Job chapter 5 and verse 19. We are praying. Please take this prayer serious. Job chapter 5 and verse 19. Are you ready to read? Want to read with me? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Number one. Next verse, please. In famine he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword. Next verse. Thou shalt be hid from the scourging tongues of men. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Why? Listen. It says, for thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field. That means nobody can use any element of creation to make enchantments against me. You use sand, you, I, I have a covenant with the elements of creation that they will not fight me because I was given dominion over them. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, no enchantment, no divination against my life and my destiny shall try. Lift your voice and pray. I am in covenant. I am in covenant. I am in covenant. With the foe. I am in covenant. I am in covenant. With the foe. I am in covenant. With the foe. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. Please read with me. Are you ready? One to read. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace. How long? Always. By all means. If it means clearing the troublemakers out of the way, by all means. If it means making a way, by all means, lift your voice and say, Lord, by all means, give me peace. 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 By all means, Hallelujah. 
عملية عزايا 61 عزايا 61 The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. There are people physically, you see them moving, but in the realm of the Spirit, the Bible says that they are bound. Next verse. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn in Zion. Verse 3. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Verse 4. I receive it for myself. It says, And they shall build the old ways, they shall raise up the former desolations, and shall repair the waste cities and desolations of many generations. Verse 5. And strangers. This is where we are getting to. You don't need to know who will help you. Strangers. And strangers shall stand and see. Listen, listen, listen. Strangers shall stand and feed your flock. It says, and the sons of aliens or foreigners shall be your poor men. This was what happened to a man called Mephibosheth. The Bible says, and David said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they called a man called Ziba who had 15 sons. The Bible says he sent him to Lodaba. He said, there is a crippled man called Mephibosheth. Go and fetch the man, the king said. When he came, he said, although you are crippled, even Mephibosheth said, am I a dog that the king will be sending for me? He said the children of Ziba would plow the land for him. He said, but as for you, Mephibosheth, you will eat with me at my table here forever. Keep that scripture there. Listen, this scripture is a deliverance scripture. Stop thinking the miracle will come through the person you know. It's none of your business how God will bring you the breakthrough. Stop troubling your uncle, your auntie. Every time you are saying, God, visit me, your mind is going to a particular person. That real estate man. Leave God to decide who, like a movie director. Let him decide who will come with a blessing. Are you ready to pray? Make decrees in this season. Strangers are feeding my flock. Strangers are feeding my flock. The sons of Elia are coming. Express me. Help. We pray blessings. Rising from everywhere. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we're done. Are you ready to pray? We are going to pray for Nigeria. How many of you know that we owe a responsibility to pray for this nation? You see the happenings around this nation? The church should not be silent. It's not about going around to make all kinds of unguarded statements. Our assignment is to pray. Pray like believers with intelligence. He said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love you. We are going to pray. We cannot fold our arms and allow the devil to continue to destroy people. You heard the testimony of our dear auntie here? The precious daughter just came out of the her school. And these wicked, evil people entered a car. And that's how they carried her. Killed other innocent people. Whoever digs a pit for you, I stand by my God and I declare they must enter that pit. Hallelujah. Now listen. Haman was plotting the annihilation of the Jews. And he was clearly cooperating with Vashti. And God needed to remove Vashti. And when God brought Esther, 
Esther forgot her assignment and she was enjoying the palace and Mordecai sent a warning that warning is for all of us every time you hear trouble somewhere don't say it's still far don't make the mistake of Esther Mordecai said do not think when they are done with us from afar you will be spared the moment you hear that there is trouble anywhere you owe a responsibility to stay the power of hell don't just say i am secured esther knew that if she kept quiet one day they would discover she were a jew and they would kill her and she took the risk i'm going to meet the king even without his invitation if i perish i perish one of the things i'm praying and trusting that god will do to the body of christ is to help us to rise to that point of maturity where we are able to take the corporate burden of the body even if personally there is nothing wrong with us are we together when you hear that there is an accident you don't just say oh the members of my church were protected it is a cry for everybody are we together now you must be able to hide your individualism so that the corporate good of the body will speak so just because nothing happened to your business during the pandemic just because you are okay just because you have security forces around your house does not mean you should negate the fact that our nation needs help as responsible believers part of the ministry of priesthood is to stand and midwife deliverance and say no lord it cannot happen not in our lifetime this kind of evil that plagued the nations we must stand as priests Are we together? For a very long time, we have been largely very selfish. Once trouble does not come near you, you read the news and say, oh, that's fine. It is them. Once it is not your child that is kidnapped, no problem. No. We are going to pray in one minute. Engage in strategic prayer. Listen. The seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making, they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis. They are seasons of prayer and intercession. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime. Because you are in a season. The anchor will be your prayer. hallelujah day and night you are praying lord i don't know what is happening to my life but i'm praying you have your prayer time in the morning you have your prayer time in the evening but every time is prayer time every time is prayer time an evil report your wife just lost her child what are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray. Let him pray. Not let him discuss. Not let him grumble around. Not let him call God names and say I will backslide. Let him pray. Psalm 34 please. From verse 4 to 7. And then the last part. And we will pray. Psalm 34 I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? All my fears. Next verse. We are reading to 4 to 7. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. 6. The poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of how many all his troubles last verse the angel of the lord encamped around them that fear him and delivered them prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons but especially this season lord what is happening around my life my wife just got attacked my son just got attacked my job just got attacked i am not understanding what is happening i set myself like daniel onto prayer god grants you grace you can add with fasting add with fasting 
this spiritual laziness of eating anyhow, anytime. Many believers now fast as a ceremony. Three days fasting, you carry it on your head as if, you, as if it's, it's 12 years fasting. If you love food more than your destiny, life will cheat you again and again. Food is okay, but please let me tell you, mighty ones, you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it. There are many of you here, you cannot remember. I may be wrong, I'm not saying you should do it. Please, I'm not saying you should do it. But as far as I'm concerned, there are spiritual levels that if you get to, a week should never pass that you did not fast. You are joking. You are joking. Not with what you are doing to hell. You are joking. Seven days. Ah, no. Himarama. Listen, let me tell you this. I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory, real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise. Real men of power contact power when men sleep. May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the may God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light. Off the light. You are praying. Not allow distractions. You are praying the next thing. You see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract. Off the light. You can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing, but there is a register every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. You don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Rose of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. A time will come, you feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you are a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages and they are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. 
There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Praise you are receiving power. is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior don't joke with your destiny like that don't joke with your destiny like that the bible says to enter and shut the door behind you shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret you don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. Shikas kaparakatos. Don't break the take the kaparakatos. Shikos kamanakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. Pray for me, pray for me is wonderful. But you must become the priest of your destiny. Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salabakata. Shabakanda skama hasaba. Rakata bakato sopokoto shege telekata. Emrata senekoto shalikata. Fasebe shana hasaba rakos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life, I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life, I cannot allow my prayer life to go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and sought yet. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray.
125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, he would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use the same strategy to strengthen, strengthen. Pray, I say, strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Next verse. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity next verse do good O lord unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts we are reading to the last verse as for such as turn aside in their crooked ways the lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity but peace upon joshua servant Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray and say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms and say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability, power, stamina. The lifting power of God. Let it rest upon you now. Can I tell you this? You will be ten times greater than your contemporaries. I say it again. You will be ten times greater than your contemporaries. Even in all age, I prophesy to you, you will be ten times greater than your contemporaries. Hear me, anyone here overdue for promotion and either by tribal sentiments or religion you have not been lifted, I stand by the God of heaven and I decree between now and the next three months, rise to the position that is due you. Now hear me, one of the reasons why people do not rise to that position of greatness is because the people who are sitting there have not stood up. Can you hear me? For as long as Vashti is still sitting, Esther cannot be enthroned. For as long, the Bible never tells us whoever was sitting on Joseph's position. Either a space is created or the wrong people there must vacate it for you. In any case, and by all means, I prophesy to you, that anyone sitting on your seat of glory right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead I overturn 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 in business I overturn in ministry I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn until you sit there in the name of Jesus Christ
and anywhere you must get to that they say there is no space by prophecy I shift the space left and right and create a place for you I say it again I shift the space left and right politicians business people professionals we create a space of relevance for you I will hold on through the storms and I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men don't be tired every word I speak is placing something on your head could not King Ahasuerus sleep hear me there are many people whose lives you have helped but there is a spirit that came upon them to give what is supposed to be to you to another person and you keep wondering how do I keep helping people some of you are not lazy you have helped many people in this nation in this city can I tell you this please look up one day I was reading the story of Naaman and the Bible tells us that a little slave girl who served his wife came and talked, she spoke to him. It was based on her recommendation and persuasion that the man went down to write a letter to the king and finally meet Elisha. Hold on. The Bible says when he found out he had been healed, he carried gifts. Is that true? He carried gifts because you didn't come to see a prophet empty-handed. He carried gifts and he took to Elisha. Elisha rejected the gift and just healed him. And Gehazi, unfortunately, out of a life of compromise and dishonesty, got into trouble. The Bible never shows us the gift he took to the slave girl. I see the gift you took to the prophet who helped you. But where is the gift of the slave girl? whose persuasion was the one why you were healed. There are many, many, many people here. You are the one that even brought so many people to Koinonia here. Some of them have testified, but where is yours? That book of remembrance must be opened. Now hear me. Please receive this very prayer. The Bible says, Mordecai, heard a few people who were conspiring because his assignment was to be a watcher at the gate and he found out that there were people who were plotting to kill the king to kill a king that controls 127 provinces you must be wicked people and he revealed that plot and the people were hung in the gallows and it was documented but he was not rewarded and the Bible says when his season had come that night, just like this night. Let me say it again, that night, just like this night. The king could not sleep. And the king said, bring me the chronicles. And they opened it where the archives of people who did good. You know, my Bible says withhold not good from them that it is due when it is within your power do not tell them go and come tomorrow when you can do it now it was within the power of the king to honor Mordecai but there had to be a spirit sponsored by the man Haman but that night when he opened the chronicles he said read it for me and he found there the good works of Mordecai let me speak to someone even if it was 10 years ago it was written did you know what I said? Even if it was 10 years ago you helped, for every time you help someone know Jesus, for every time you help someone find salvation, you help someone maybe get a job, it was written. And under a certain condition, the book can be opened. And he said, what has been done to this man? They said, nothing. He said, who is in the chamber? A man was there. And they called him. He said, Haman, what shall I do to a man whom my heart delights to honor? And foolish Haman thought it was him. 
so he decided to describe an elaborate system of honor that the king would take his robe and put it on such a man and he will ride upon the king's horse all through the cities and somebody will be escorting him and shouting bow the knee he said this is what should be done to the man that the king has honored he said quickly make sure none of these words fail go and do the same to mordecai i want to declare to somebody while you are in church here may god open the book and cause people to start discussing how to lift you let me say it again while you are in the house of god here may somebody somewhere in abuja in lagos in london in us in the name of jesus christ may they wake up from sleep god will wake them and seize their sleep and open up the file of your kindness and remind them and insist that you are blessed i prophesy this in the name of jesus you have one desire and strangers shall stand and see, listen, listen, listen. Strangers shall stand and see your flock. It says, and the sons of aliens or foreigners shall be your plowmen. This was what happened to a man called Mephibosheth. The Bible says, and David said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they called a man called Zippa who had 15 sons. The Bible says he sent him to Lodabar. He said, there is a crippled man called Mephibosheth. Go and fetch the man, the king said. When he came, he said, although you are crippled, even Mephibosheth said, am I a dog that the king will be sending for me? He said the children of Ziba would plow the land for him. He said, but as for you, Mephibosheth, you will eat with me at my table here forever. Keep that scripture there. Listen, this scripture is a deliverance scripture. Stop thinking the miracle will come through the person you know. It's none of your business how God will bring you the breakthrough. Stop troubling your uncle, your auntie. Every time you are saying, God, visit me, your mind is going to a particular person. That real estate man. Leave God to decide who, like a movie director. Let him decide who will come with a blessing. Are you ready to pray? Make the peace in this season. Strangers are feeding my flock. Strangers are feeding my flock. The sons of Elia are coming. Bless me. Hell, be great blessing. Rising from everywhere. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we are done. Are you ready to pray? We are going to pray for Nigeria. How many of you know that we owe a responsibility to pray for this nation? You see the happenings around this nation? The church should not be silent. It's not about going around to make all kinds of unguarded statements. Our assignment is to pray. Pray like believers with intelligence. He said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love you. We are going to pray. We cannot fold our arms and allow the devil to continue to destroy people. You heard the testimony of our dear auntie here? The precious daughter just came out of the bar school. And these wicked, evil people entered a car. And that's how they carried her. Killed other innocent people. Whoever digs a pit for you, I stand by my God and I declare they must enter that pit. Hallelujah. Now listen. Haman was plotting the annihilation of the Jews. And he was clearly cooperating with Vashti. And God needed to remove Vashti. And when God brought Esther, Esther forgot her assignment. And she was enjoying the palace. And Mordecai sent a warning. That warning is for all of us. Every time you hear trouble somewhere, don't say it's still far. Don't make the mistake of Esther. Mordecai said, do not think when they are done with us from afar, you will be spared. 
the moment you hear that there is trouble anywhere, you owe a responsibility to stay the power of hell. Don't just say, I am secured. Esther knew that if she kept quiet, one day they would discover she were a Jew and they would kill her. And she took the risk. I'm going to meet the king. Even without his invitation, if I perish, I perish. One of the things I'm praying and trusting that God will do to the body of Christ is to help us to rise to that point of maturity where we are able to take the corporate burden of the body even if personally there is nothing wrong with us. Are we together? When you hear that there is an accident, you don't just say, oh, the members of my church were protected. It is a cry for everybody. Are we together now? You must be able to hide your individualism so that the corporate good of the body will speak. So just because nothing happened to your business during the pandemic, just because you are okay, just because you have security forces around your house, does not mean you should negate the fact that our nation needs help. As responsible believers, part of the ministry of priesthood is to stand and midwife deliverance and say, no, Lord, it cannot happen, not in our lifetime. This kind of evil that plagued the nations, we must stand as priests. Are we together? For a very long time, we have been largely very selfish. Once trouble does not come near you, you read the news and say, oh, that's fine. It is them. Once it is not your child that is kidnapped, no problem. No. We are going to pray in one minute. Engage in strategic prayer. Listen. The seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making, they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis. They are seasons of prayer and intercession. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime. Because you are in a season. Your anchor will be your prayer. Hallelujah. Day and night, you are praying. Lord, I don't know what is happening to my life, but I'm praying. You have your prayer time in the morning, you have your prayer time in the evening. But every time is prayer time. Every time is prayer time. An evil report, your wife just lost her child. What are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray. Let him pray. Not let him discuss. Not let him grumble around. Not let him call God names and say I will backslide. Let him pray. Psalm 34, please, from verse 4 to 7, and then the last part, and we will pray. Psalm 34, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from what? All my fears. Next verse, we are reading to 4, to 7. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Six, the poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of how many? All his troubles. Last verse, the angel of the Lord encamped around them that fear him, and delivered them. Prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons. But especially this season. Lord, what is happening around my life? My wife just got attacked. My son just got attacked. My job just got attacked. I am not understanding what is happening. I set myself like Daniel onto prayer. God grants you grace. You can add with fasting. Add with fasting. This spiritual laziness of eating anyhow, anytime. Many believers now fast as a ceremony. Three days fasting, you carry it on your head as if, as if it's, it's 12 years fasting. If you love food more than your destiny, 
life will cheat you again and again. Food is okay, oh, but please let me tell you, mighty ones, you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it. There are many of you here, you cannot remember. I may be wrong, I'm not saying you should do it. Please, I'm not saying you should do it. But as far as I'm concerned, there are spiritual levels that if you get to, a week should never pass that you did not fast. You are joking. You are joking. Not with what you are doing to hell. You are joking. Seven days. Ah, no. Himalama. Listen, let me tell you this. I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory, real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise. Real men of power contact power when men sleep. May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the may God give you the grace to not allow sleep to cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light, off the light. You are praying. Don't allow distractions. You are praying the next thing. You see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract off the light. You can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. You don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Rose of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in it, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. A time will come you feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you're a liar. I'm going far. A time will come your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. are languages and their levels of power contact groanings that cannot be uttered you get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray there are times that only one word one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes pray it you are receiving power It's not something you do in a group so that people will see you 
and think you're a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. Shikas kaparakatos. Onbeketekelekatakatos. Shikos kamadakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. Pray for me, pray for me is wonderful. But you must become the priest of your destiny. Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salamakata. Shanakandas kama hasaba. Rakata bakato sopa koto shenge telikata. Emrata sene koto shalikata. Fasepe shana haskaba ratos. Reke teke teke te skaba ratos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life to fall down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. Slumberatoskama. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. Men slept. While men slept, the enemy came and sought yet. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, shabbat 
25. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, he would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use the same strategy to strengthen, strengthen. Prayer is a strengthener. trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion which cannot be moved but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Next verse. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity. Next verse. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. We are reading to the last verse. As for such as turn aside in their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace upon Joshua servant. Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray. And say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms and say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability, power, stamina. The lifting power of God, let it rest upon you now. Can I tell you this? You will be ten times greater than your contemporaries. I say it again. You will be ten times greater than your contemporaries. Even in all age, I prophesy to you, you will be ten times greater than your contemporaries. Hear me. Anyone here overdue for promotion, and either by tribal sentiments or religion you have not been lifted, I stand by the God of heaven and I decree between now and the next three months, rise to the position that is due you. Now hear me. One of the reasons why people do not rise to that position of greatness is because the people who are sitting there have not stood up. Can you hear me? For as long as Vashti is still sitting, Esther cannot be enthroned. For as long, the Bible never tells us whoever was sitting on Joseph's position. Either a space is created or the wrong people there must vacate it for you. In any case, and by all means, I prophesy to you that anyone sitting on your seat of glory right now by the power that raised Christ from the dead I overturn 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 in business I overturn in ministry I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn I overturn until you sit there in the name of Jesus Christ and anywhere you 
must get to that they say there is no space by prophecy I shift the space left and right and create a place for you I say it again I shift the space left and right politicians business people professionals we create a space of relevance for you I will hold on through the storms and I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men don't be tired every word I speak is placing something on your head could not King Hazarus sleep hear me there are many people whose lives you have helped but there is a spirit that came upon them to give what is supposed to be to you to another person and you keep wondering how do I keep helping people some of you are not lazy you have helped many people in this nation in this city can I tell you this please look up one day I was reading the story of Naaman and the Bible tells us that a little slave girl who served his wife came and talked, she spoke to him. It was based on her recommendation and persuasion that the man went down to write a letter to the king and finally meet Elisha. Hold on. The Bible says when he found out he had been healed, he carried gifts. Is that true? He carried gifts because you didn't come to see a prophet empty-handed. He carried gifts and he took to Elisha. Elisha rejected the gift and just healed him. And Gehazi, unfortunately, out of a life of compromise and dishonesty, got into trouble. The Bible never shows us the gift he took to the slave girl. I see the gift you took to the prophet who helped you. But where is the gift of the slave girl? whose persuasion was the one why you were healed there are many 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 people here you are the one that even brought so many people to koinonia here some of them have testified but where is yours that book of remembrance must be opened now hear me please receive this very prayer the bible says mordecai heard a few people who were conspiring because his assignment was to be a watcher at the gate and he found out that there were people who were plotting to kill the king to kill a king that controls 127 provinces you must be wicked people and he revealed that plot and the people were hung in the gallows and it was documented but he was not rewarded and the Bible says when his season had come that night, just like this night, let me say it again, that night, just like this night, the king could not sleep and the king said, bring me the chronicles and they opened it where the archives of people who did good, you know, my Bible says withhold not good from them that it is due when it is within your power do not tell them go and come tomorrow when you can do it now it was within the power of the king to honor Mordecai but there had to be a spirit sponsored by the man Haman but that night when he opened the chronicles he said read it for me and he found there the good works of Mordecai let me speak to someone even if it was 10 years ago it was written did you know what I said? Even if it was 10 years ago you helped, for every time you help someone know Jesus, for every time you help someone find salvation, you help someone maybe get a job, it was written. And under a certain condition, the book can be opened. And he said, what has been done to this man? They said, nothing. He said, who is in the chamber? The man was there. And they called him. He said, Haman, what shall I do to a man whom my heart delights to honor? And foolish Haman thought it was him. 
so he decided to describe an elaborate system of honor that the king would take his robe and put it on such a man and he will ride upon the king's horse all through the cities and somebody will be escorting him and shouting bow the knee he said this is what should be done to the man that the king has honored he said quickly make sure none of these words fail go and do the same to mordecai i want to declare to somebody while you are in church here may god open the book and cause people to start discussing how to lift you let me say it again while you are in the house of god here may somebody somewhere in abuja in lagos in london in u.s in the name of jesus christ may they wake up from sleep god will wake them and seize their sleep and open up the file of your kindness and remind them and insist that you are blessed i prophesy this in the name of jesus Hallelujah. We believe you were blessed by the message you just watched. Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos. So more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.